All right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to this Integrating Salesforce and Slack uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Christoph Conrads, and I'm a developer evangelist with Salesforce. And today I'm joined by Amir Shavat from uh, Slack. Amir, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm very happy you're all here. Uh, my name is Amir Shavat, and I'm the Director of Developer Relations in Slack. Great. So because this is a Salesforce presentation, I have to show you the next slide. And uh, as you know, many of you know, this is simply about you not making purchasing decisions based on forward-looking statements that we may make uh, during this presentation. So with that, we can move um, to the next slide where uh, we would actually like you to go social um, and um, engage on your favorite uh, social channels. So as you may know, we are on Twitter as uh, Salesforce Devs. The hashtag that we would like you to use today is uh, Force Webinar. And of course, you can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube as uh, Salesforce developers as well. So how is this going to work? Um, you may have a ton of questions, and that's great. Um, so feel free to post your questions in the questions uh, chat box. Um, and we will save some time at the end of the presentation to make sure uh, that we answer all these questions. We have a super exciting agenda, I feel. Uh, so uh, moving on to the next slide, yes. So first, Amir um, is going to give us um, kind of a detailed overview of Slack. That's going to be the first uh, part of this presentation. And then I will come back to talk specifically about the Slack and Salesforce integration and the different uh, integration scenarios that are possible. So with that, I will turn it over to Amir. Thank you. Um, so in this section, we're going to talk about uh, Slack platform uh, and different uh, APIs and features that we enable in the Slack platform. Um, we'll start with our mission. Our mission is to make people's work life simpler, more pleasant, and more productive. And there's a lot of tools in our world that help us do that uh, at our fingertips. Uh, tools like Salesforce uh, and many others like Slack uh, that create um, your work life in a, in a delightful and extremely uh, productive way. Uh, but th those tools come with a price. Uh, and the price is that these tools don't usually uh, talk together and don't usually integrate uh, together. Um, so our mission in Slack is to uh, consolidate uh, the experience uh, of these tools uh, and to provide a control center where you not only talk to your uh, mates and Slack, but you also uh, converse with your tools and services that you use for work. Um, and the way we do that is by providing an API. Uh, Slack has, a, has an API, uh, and using that API you can do one of two things. You can create a custom integration, uh, and you create a, a Slack app. A custom integration is an integration that you create specifically for your team. Um, it's very easy to create this uh, custom integration, uh, but it only works for your team. Other teams cannot install that. Uh, use custom integrations in places where you have a specific proprietary process or you want to integrate with an internal server that is only unique for your team. Uh, a Slack app is, uh, an is a set of integration that any team can install. Uh, you wrap uh, this integration with an OAuth flow uh, and any team could go through that OAuth flow uh, and install uh, your integration. So now we're going to talk about the different uh, API features uh, that we provide in the Slack platform. The first type of integration uh, feature is the notifications. Notifications are a delightful way to pipe content into Slack. Uh, in this example, uh, the Google Calendar is sending me a notification whenever I have a, a meeting. Uh, this is very useful for me not to, to, to do contact switching with the uh, with the calendar tab, but it's also useful to post this in a, in a channel for my team so that they know when I have a meeting and when not to disturb me. Um, so think of uh, notifications of anything that you would send email or an SMS through. Uh, but instead of sending it specifically to every person individually, a notification could be transparent uh, in the team and could be collaborative. 
So if you have a service that sends uh, errors, um, the notification, the team could actually work on the error together and see who's taking care of that. Another example of notification is our uh, integration with Envoy. Uh, this is a guest registration system. So every time somebody visits me in the office, uh, he registered or she registers, uh, gets a sticker, and I immediately get a notification uh, in my Slack with their photo and uh, name. So this is a great way uh, to connect between the Internet of Things uh, and Slack. So at the technical level, uh, notification is just a URL that we expose to you. Um, as you can see, you can actually run this URL as a curl command. Uh, once you create this uh, URL in the configuration of Slack, uh, you, you get this URL and you can actually post uh, a, a, a good JSON that will create um, images, text, links inside uh, Slack. Um, and you can run this in any language, a uh, very simple URL. Uh, tips and tricks for notifications. First of all, formatting the results. Um, we've, we've seen uh, a lot of good partners that create uh, notifications with images, uh, with links, uh, formatted results, improve uh, engagement, uh, and create a, uh, a delightful experience. Um, you can look at our api.slack.com. There's a, a section about notific about formatting, and we even provide you with an ability to test different formatting uh, results. Um, the second thing is digest and don't spam. A lot of people use um, notifications in a very um, some, somewhat spammy way, like every time something happens, you send a notification. Uh, best practice here is actually to collect a set of notification and digest them in a summary. So let's say there's a um, every every minute there's a sale. You could you can actually uh, collect all the sales for a day and do a daily post about what's happening uh, today or a half day if that makes sense. Uh, and and consider using emojis. Emojis are, are a great way uh, to make your notifications delightful. And using sometimes sometimes they're very good giving a visual cue like this uh, green V to show that something has been done. Okay, so we talked about notification. The second type of integration uh, feature is the slash command. A slash command is a great way to invoke things from within Slack on a third party services. Think of this as the command line for your service from within uh, Slack. In this example, we partner with Foursquare to query uh, places um, all around the world. So uh, in this example, I run a Foursquare slash command uh, business lunch in Miami. And Foursquare can actually return, uh, as you can see, a well-formatted result uh, with, the, um, with business lunch locations around me. Um, as you can see, this is what I talked about uh, around formatting. You can really uh, do a lot of good work um, with for formatting your results. Um, again, at a technical level, every time a user hits a slash command that you configured, uh, we uh, hit your URL. So this is a URL that you configure from within Slack. And in this example, um, we were using um, Python, no, yeah, Python, uh, to answer the, um, the, the query. So we're act actually taking the username from the query and just simply uh, replying hello. Um, and you can actually get a lot of information like user ID, te um, team ID, uh, and other parameters from the query uh, so you can actually format a result per user. Um, tips and, tr and tricks uh, for a slash command. Uh, consider delayed response. Sometimes when I run a slash command, I, the process is, is long lived and you need uh, time to run the result for the user. For example, if I do a slash report and the report might take five minutes, you might want to immediately uh, re reply to the user saying, hey, um, yes, uh, we're working on this, and then you can use a URL that we provide to you to uh, create delayed response. So you can respond up to three times and up to half an hour after the user has uh, hit the slash command. And then this is a way to do asynchronous uh, messaging back to the user after a slash command. Um, think about the name that you give to the slash command. Uh, sometimes uh, people take a too, too generic name or a name that is not associated with their uh, brand. So try to think about how can you create uh, a slash command that is also 
uh, meaningful, uh, but is associated with your app and with your brand. Um, another thing is, uh, and we get this a lot, is how do we link uh, users from within Slack to users um, in other uh, in, in your database? Um, and the way you do that is that we pass the user ID as, pass, as part of the slash command, uh, the Slack user ID. You can then use, use uh, your own mapping to map between our users in Slack and your users in your database. So uh, Lyft does a good job with that. So the first time you go and do a slash, a slash Lyft, um, Lyft actually asks you to authenticate within their system, links these two uh, IDs, and from then on, you're authenticated within their system. The last uh, part of uh, integration features are the bots. Bots are a great and popular new way to interact with your users. Uh, think of bots as instead of having a user that is powered by a human, this is a user that is powered by a uh, software, a user that is powered by your service. Um, this is a great way to interact with people because people are used to interacting with other people, with other users uh, in, in, in Slack. Right, and wouldn't it be awesome if you could take your uh, vacation through just talking to someone on Slack? And wouldn't it be awesome if you can just uh, query Salesforce just by talking to your sales bot uh, at Slack? So bots facilitate a, a great way uh, to converse and to create um, complex and contextual conversation over a business process. Um, in this example, uh, we partnered with Howdy uh, to create a check-in bot. Um, check-ins are something that engineers do all the time. You meet every day and you talk about what am I doing today, what am I doing tomorrow, and what do I need help with. Um, and it's usually a complex process, especially when there's distributed team around the world. Um, in this example, Howdy actually goes and checks in with all of the members of the team and reports back to, um, to the owner of the team uh, with the uh, results from the check-in. Um, building bots is a little bit more complex than just webhooks uh, or URLs. So we partnered with Howdy cr to create an open source uh, framework called BotKit. Um, you can look at it uh, in GitHub. In this, in this example, uh, you can see that the bot is actually hearing, looking to hear uh, hello, hi, greeting, in a way of a direct, men, a direct mention or mention or direct message, you can actually DM the bot. You can actually direct message the bot. And in this case, the bot replies simply with hello. But again, in the same way you do with a slash command, you can build a complex conversation. Uh, and actually, we support hear, ask, say, and other conversational atoms uh, that you can actually use uh, with BotKit. Tips and tricks around building bots. Uh, support help and feedback. Sometimes the bot will not understand the human, so it should uh, always support help. The bot should help the user um, help themselves, right? Feedback is also very important. We've seen a lot of good bots that provide feedback, and then the user could give feedback for improving uh, the bot. Um, onboarding is also super important. So think about feedback, think about help, and think about uh, onboarding. If we're talking about onboarding, let's go back to the spam. Um, we've seen a few bots that uh, once they join the team, they start DMing everyone and start spamming that. Please don't do that. Um, think of onboarding in the way of um, you want to onboard someone to your team, like a new member to your team. What would be the great way to onboard them? Probably in getting them to DM everyone in the team would probably get them not that popular in the team. But just going into the general channel and saying, hey, I'm a new person here, uh, please um, work with me on this and that would be a great way to onboard uh, a person and a bot. Um, so think about how do you onboard and how do you support your users uh, with this new type of interaction. So we talked about the different features of, uh, of how to integrate with Slack and how can you expose services in Slack. Uh, but you also want to sometimes expose uh, your app. So distribute, distributing your app uh, is sometimes a big challenge. And we solve this challenge with creating uh, a directory. So you can actually create a Slack uh, app and, um, and put it in our directory. And my call to you is look at this directory 
um, and see what's happening there. Look at best practices uh, from other bots and other integrations, but also see what's not there. There's a lot of categories that are still uh, missing, and there's a lot of greenfield opportunity that you can actually uh, take advantage of and, fulf and fulfill. Uh, so uh, look at our directory, slack.com slash apps. Look at what's there, uh, get best practices, and also see what's missing and implement that. Um, tips and tricks for getting on board. So there's a, a, there's a review process. If you go to api.slack.com, there's a full tutorial about how to build an app and how to go through uh, the review process. Uh, but things that we look for are uh, scopes. So ask for minimal scopes when you do uh, authentication. You can ask for a lot of scopes, um, but that really uh, makes the user um, think that your app might be too risky. So ask for minimal scopes. Uh, be thoughtful for, with your description. Make sure that you have um, check for typos, check for uh, that, you, you, that, you're, um, that you're providing a good description for your users uh, to install the app. Um, and think about uh, terms of services, support, and install page. Uh, we require those because this is a feedback from our users that they really find this useful. So if you can focus on these three things, um, I think your review process will be uh, very short um, and hopefully very sweet. Uh, last but not least, I want to uh, I want to you to think about the the when you build an app about the full process, the full life cycle that your users are going to go through. Uh, in this example, um, a user starts engaging with their, uh, with their users and collecting users uh, through intercom. Uh, then once the user becomes a client, they put them in the CRM and Salesforce. Um, then they interact with them uh, through MailChimp and nurture the relationship. Uh, and then they support them through Zendesk. One of, once all of these are connected into Slack, it provides a consolidated look and feel and a consolidated experience and turns Slack into your dashboard uh, for the tools and services that you use for work. So think about how does your app solve a problem in a continuum of a business process. Um, this is the read our fantastic manual uh, slide. So you can go to slack.com slash apps and see what's there. And you can also look at api.slack.com. There's tutorials for building custom integrations for your own team and building Slack apps for every team. And that's me. Krista? All right, thank you, Amir. Um, all right, so that was great. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to take it from here. And um, so basically, we're going to review these different integration scenarios that Amir described. And I'm going to try to apply them uh, specifically uh, to Salesforce. So I'm going to uh, start with a, a first um, scenario, um, which is when something happens inside Salesforce and, and you want to uh, push that information to a Slack channel. In other words, you have a, a community there living in, in, in Slack and you want to let them know that something in Salesforce just happened. That could be you know, an opportunity that closed, it could be a new case that was created, it could be a, a new account that was created. So um, instead of trying to describe that, why don't we uh, quickly take a look here. Um, so I'm in Salesforce, I'm going to go uh, straight to my opportunities, I'm going to open one randomly here and um, I'm going to change the stage, so the status of that opportunity and say, for instance, that we want it. So as I'm saving this, I want you to pay attention to the upper right corner of my screen here. Um, and we're going to save it. And here we go. So you see that immediately because I'm actually logged in into my Slack team here, I get a message and I can click it and you see that in my team automatically I get notified um, that that uh, opportunity, the stage of that opportunity uh, changed. So 
Uh, how does it work? Um, as Amir mentioned, uh, this integration is really implemented using um, what Slack calls incoming webhook. And basically what it is, it's simply an endpoint that Slack exposes so that external application can post information to that endpoint. And of course, then at that point, uh, Slack is going to uh, push that to the specific channel that the endpoint is mapped to. Um, so let me actually show you uh, very quickly how this would be uh, configured. So in Slack, I'm going to go in um, the configuration sections here. These are my custom integrations. And you see here the three types of integrations that Amir was talking about. And we are starting here uh, with incoming webhooks. And you see that in this case, I only have one. So I'm posting to the general channel as Salesforce opportunity. So let's take a look uh, very quickly at that configuration. So the key thing here, I mean, there, there are a couple of things that are important. So first of all, you can map that webhook to a specific channel. Not everybody is interested, so uh, you'll map it to a specific channel. But the key thing of this integration is really that Slack provides you with an endpoint, the webhook, where we as Salesforce will be able to uh, push information. You can give that integration a name. So in this case, I called it Salesforce Opportunities. And you can give it an icon. So this is the Salesforce traditional icon uh, for opportunities. Now, so that so it's configured. So that webhook is configured. The last bit, if you want, is going to be to get Salesforce to actually post uh, to that endpoint, to that webhook, and, and kind of automate that process um, you know, every single time the stage of an opportunity changes, you want to post to that webhook. So for that, um, we actually have a tool that could be uh, super helpful, and that's Process Builder, because it's really about uh, automating a process. So I'm quickly going to show you how you could go about uh, building that, and, and um, you would simply build a process here. So I, I build a process that I called opportunity status change, and I'm going to open that process. And so you see that it's working on the opportunity object in Salesforce. The condition is, you know, um, did the stage name change, right? So this process is going to be fired every time the opportunity is updated. And if that's the case, if that's true, then we have an action here that is post to Slack. Now, post to Slack is not a built-in action inside Process Builder. As you can see here, it's actually an Apex um, action. And so I'm calling a little bit of Apex code here, just a few lines of code um, in a class that I provided here, a Slack Opportunity Publisher. And the only thing that that class that's going to post the information to Slack needs to know is really the ID of the opportunity. So I'm sure that some of you want to see what's behind that code here. So let's take a very quick look. So this is the Apex class, Slack Opportunity Publisher. This is the method that's going to be um, invoked. Remember, everything works uh, in bulk mode um, in Salesforce. So in this case, to avoid spamming, because obviously if you imported a bunch of opportunities, you wouldn't want to kind of you know, post like 2,000 uh, messages to that Slack channel. So we are only going to take the first one um, to kind of avoid dealing with the real uh, bulk mode. So we get the ID. We do a quick uh, SOCL select here to get the details um, of that opp opportunity. And then we'll simply build a, the message that we want to, um, to send to that, to that endpoint, including the opportunity name and the stage name. And then we queue that call so that um, it's going to be sent to, to where? To that specific uh, endpoint. All right, so that's really how that first uh, type of integration would work. You have. Um, you have events in Salesforce that you want to post to Slack. So let's move on to a second use case where, in this case, you are, as the user, you are in Slack, you're working with Slack, working with your team, and at some point, you need 
to access uh, Salesforce information. So the traditional scenario would be that, okay, you leave Slack behind, you open Salesforce, you get the information that you want, you, you, you leave Salesforce behind, you come back to Slack and you, you paste the information that you grabbed from Salesforce. So this is working a little differently. It basically lets you access um, Salesforce information right from um, the Slack UI. So again, instead of trying to explain that too much, I will uh, show you how that works. So let's say, for instance, that I want to know uh, what's in my pipeline, and you see that uh, it's helping me finding uh, that specific slash command. So I see that there is a pipeline command, and I can provide the, the number of opportunities that I want to display. So these are going to be the top of opportunities in my pipeline. Let's go for three. And here we go. So you see that I get my three opportunities. If I wanted at this point, I could quickly access that opportunity in Salesforce. But I think I have enough information here to actually know what I wanted to know. Um, and maybe I see, okay, well, this first opportunity is really super important. It's not closing. Uh, maybe I need to call uh, someone there to see, you know, what's uh, what's exactly happening. So I have a contact there. Uh, it's uh, Andy. So again, instead of jumping off uh, Slack and and going to Salesforce at this point, I can get the information that I need to be able to uh, call Andy. So I'm going to do this, and I get the information out of um, out of Salesforce, and now I can. Um, I can call Andy, and, and maybe finally to show you a last uh, example here, maybe Andy tells me that he didn't receive the proposal or something like that, so I can say uh, proposal and send Andy new proposal, okay? And so here it's simply going to go ahead, so what I wanted to show you here is that it's not only read only, you can of course go create uh, information in Salesforce right there uh, from uh, the Slack UI. So let's take a look at how this would actually work. So as we discussed here, uh, you will provide a slash command that um, Slack you know, will receive. So uh, it will know that it's a valid command and it will be mapped to an endpoint that you provide because obviously Slack doesn't know anything about pipeline, but it's mapped. You are going to map that slash command to an endpoint that you provide to handle that specific request. So in this case, we uh, expose that endpoint um, in a Heroku application. I'll explain why. Uh, in a second, but that Heroku application will say, okay, so I need to get the opportunities, the top three opportunities out of Salesforce, so I'm going to make a call to Salesforce, I'll get the information, and that's going to be my response to, uh, my response to Slack, that Slack is then going to display um, in that channel. So why um, Heroku in the middle here? Uh, simply because we need to authenticate, so Slack doesn't have built-in uh, authentication, we'll, we'll speak about that a little more, uh, for Salesforce. Uh, so somehow, um, before you can actually get to Salesforce, you need to authenticate. And in this case, uh, we use an integration user. I'll show that to you in a second, and then I will discuss like per user authentication. So let's, let's quickly see how you would actually configure uh, this type of integration. So I will go back uh, to my Slack configurations here, configure apps, custom integration. Um, so in this case, we are looking at slash commands, and you see that I created here uh, three slash commands, pipeline, contact, and case. Obviously, you can create uh, a lot more than that. So let's take a look at one of them, maybe contact here. Okay, so, you know, this is really the command, and this is the endpoint that Slack is going to post that request to, uh, along with a token for a security reason, so that we know that that request is really coming from Slack here. Um, and again, you can provide a name for that integration and a specific icon. So. Uh, as you can see, this app is actually deployed on Heroku. It's a small Node.js app, but it can be uh, whatever you want. And I wanted to spend a minute to kind of demystify uh, what that would look like. So basically, in this uh, Node.js implementation, you define 
um, you know, the different path that um, Slack can post to. So remember the URL was um, slack app.com slash contact. So when I get that request from Slack, I'm going to go in the contact module and and run the execute method. So let's go, uh, let's go here. And so the first thing that I do is verify the token. I spoke about that, the security uh, piece. And then I will capture the parameter that the user provided for that slash command. I will run a simple uh, SQL query. And this is the interesting piece. Um, you know, Amir mentioned that uh, Slack offers really cool formatting capabilities so that you know, the message can actually come back in a formatted way, easy to read and um, engaging. And that's essentially what it takes. You do that in the form of an attachment. And as you can see, that's, um, that's fairly easy to do. So very simple. Um, you create an endpoint, and you grab the parameters, and then you typically execute um, a SQL query. Now, the magic here, uh, you see that I'm doing org query. So that is coming from, uh, that is coming from uh, actually this bit here, or let's see. Yeah, so the, the, the query is actually executed using, as you can see here, um, a username, a default username, and a default password. So that, that's what we would call the integration user scenario. So in other words, um, all your requests will be handled by the same integration user, which is probably not appropriate for many applications, but could be totally appropriate for you know, public information that everybody has access to. So on this slide here, I wanted to discuss um, another form of authentication where uh, every request would be handled uh, by a specific uh, Salesforce user that maps to the, to the um, Slack user that actually made that request. So how do you make that happen in a nutshell? So what you would provide is a kind of a screen where the user would authenticate with both system, right? So you would use OAuth to authenticate with Slack. You would use OAuth to authenticate with Salesforce. And at that point, that specific application that also could live on Heroku has a, um, a Slack user ID and has a, um, a Salesforce token and would somehow keep uh, track of these mappings so that when a slash command comes in um, you know, with a specific Slack user ID, I can retrieve the token uh, that is mapped to that user ID and execute the Salesforce um, request on that behalf. In fact, the part on the left here is doesn't is even not required because you can actually link to this authentication screen from Slack. In that case, you would already have the user ID and all you have to ask the user to do is to authenticate with Salesforce to get the Salesforce token uh, mapping or matching that uh, Slack user ID. All right, so the last um, integration that um, we wanted to look at here is, is in fact the way I will present it here very similar uh, to what we just looked at before. So we just looked at slash commands. Um, the thing with slash commands is that you need to know what they are, even though, as you can see, you know, the system uh, can help you. But sometimes you may want to, you know, engage in a more conversational, um, you know, um, kind of dialogue um, with the system. or Maybe you are just chatting with some other colleagues and, and a user can, can kind of listen in and decide to intervene and to kind of um, you know, add some information to that. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. But at a high level, it is here in this case, it is like um, slash commands except that, sorry, except that you don't have to know uh, what they are. So let's go back to Let's go back to my team here. And so, um, so, so far our work from the, from the different channels here, but as you probably know, you can also engage in direct conversations with users or with bots. So for instance here, I have a Salesforce um, bot that I called uh, the Force One. 
And in this case, let's say I really don't know exactly what I'm supposed to ask the system, so I will just speak in English, right? I'm going to say, what are my top three opportunities? Okay, so remember we had a slash command for that, but here we will do it in a slightly different way, and you see that it works just fine, and um, the, the, the bot was able to understand what you said and provide meaningful, a meaningful response to that. So again, I could say something like a search account, uh, I think I have an account called Burlington, okay? So same thing, we were able to do that before using a slash command, but here you do it in a more conversational uh, way. And when I say conversational, it doesn't have to stop at, you know, one question, one response. The conversation can have, can have multiple steps. So like, for instance, I could say something like, um, you know, I, I really need to create a new contact in, in, um, in Salesforce now. Okay, so again, this is not slash command. This is just conversational. And the bot in this case is going to say, okay, well, okay, I, I'm all for it, but you'll need to provide me with, you know, additional information. What's the first name of that contact? What's the last name? What's the title? And what's the phone number? I'll do something like that. All right. <clears throat> And at this point, the contact is created, and it's there in uh, Salesforce. If I wanted to kind of open it in Salesforce and you know continue to look at it or look at some details, uh, the contact is right there as we just created it um, in Slack. So. So that's one way to actually um, to actually use bots. Before I show you the details of the implementation, I wanted to show you maybe another type of of use that you may um, get from 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 bots that I think uh, can be really interesting. So you know, to summarize what we did here, we said, okay, well, we need to speak to that person, to that bot, because that bot knows you know, the inform knows the information, knows the answer to, to the questions that I have. But sometimes you can use bots in a completely different way. Sometimes you can be in a general channel here and you are not even aware of the bot. You are just engaging with, you know, other members of that team and suppose that, um, I don't know, you are learning Salesforce and you wonder about process automation, like, you know, process builder that I sh just showed you there. And you say, and you talk to the team essentially, right? You say, confused about process automation. Okay, which tool should I use? So this is just random talk in that, in that uh, channel. Okay, and at that point, there is a bot, which happens to be the Trailhead bot. So some of you know Trailhead, a lot of you know Trailhead, the fun way to learn Salesforce. And by the way, this is just a proof of concept. Uh, right now, we don't have a formal Trailhead bot, but I think that would be fun to have. But I use this, this example here because you are not, you know, you didn't mean to talk to a bot. The, the bot was just listening to the conversation and at some point recognized some patterns in what you just said and said, well, you know, I can help here and I will just jump in. So that's kind of another way you could um, you could use a bot, or um, yet another example here. You can really uh, have fun with them. You can say, okay, well now I know that there is a Trailhead bot, so let's have a private conversation with that bot, and I want to check how much I know, let's say, about uh, Lightning components. Okay, quiz me about Lightning components. All right, and so you ask the bot essentially to play a game at this point, and um, the bot is going to ask you a few questions. It's hard to concentrate when I present at the same time, but uh, let's give it a try. Okay, I think it's App Builder. Great, I'm doing great so far. And what language do you use to write a Lightning component? I'll say JavaScript. Boom, great, doing great, and great, I got a badge. You see, so this is, a, again, a completely kind of different way um, you may um, use bots. So let's uh, take a look at how this would, would work. So again, you just uh, speak natural language here, you speak uh, English. At this point, 
we didn't map specific commands to endpoints, right? Because Slack at this point doesn't know what you mean and what makes sense. Like it was the case before in a slash command, at least it, it knew that you wanted to do something specific. So at this point, Slack is just going to delegate uh, the understanding of what's happening uh, to your bot. And so we have like a socket connection here where Slack is going to say, hey, you know, I got this in that channel. You know, if that makes sense to you, you can respond. Otherwise, you know, feel free to ignore it. So essentially, um, I have a, an application here, again, a Node.js application that listens to that socket, that receives all these messages from Slack, and that somehow processes them, parses them, decides if it wants to answer or not. If it wants to answer with Salesforce information, then it's pretty much the same thing as we um, uh, you know, discussed before. It's going to connect to Salesforce, get the information, and then send it back. Right? So, um, let me quickly show you um, how that would actually uh, work here. So um, this is uh, the example of the bot that we just used, the Salesforce bot, not the Trailhead bot. Um, and Amir mentioned BotKit, which is that you know toolkit to really help you uh, build bots. And it's as you will see, it's like really super easy to actually build bots with. Um, with um, with BotKit. So again, you're going to get a token to make sure that everything is secure, and then you're just going to start, um, you know, your bot that all that is basically handled uh, by BotKit. So behind the scenes, it it connects to that socket and, and basically receives the information. But you can code at a much higher level with very simple APIs like this one. Okay, so if the bot hears this, like help, this is obviously super easy, then, you know, reply this. Okay, you say, okay, you can ask me all these questions. So the next one is a little more, you know, um, uh, complicated, even though it's super, it's still super simple. So here you use simple regular expressions to say, okay, well, you know, does the, the, the thing that the user said look like this or like this? Right? Well, if that's the case, then do this, right? And in this case, I'm going to execute a find account query on Salesforce and again return a list of accounts. And now you got it. So, you know, search account, same thing. So you can define here with simple regular expressions what you are interested in and what you will respond to. And so this is, this is, pretty simple, even though you can be sophisticated with regular expressions, but BotKit also lets you connect middleware so that if you wanted to, you know, plug in some, you know, natural language processing toolkit or artificial intelligence toolkit, you could do that too. And the goal is, of course, to, always, to, to really make sense of what the user asked or um, what the user said. Okay. So that is that. Um, and then one thing that I realized is that I forgot to show you the configuration here. So let's quickly go here because that's the last one that we um, that we didn't look at together. So that's the bot, okay? Um, and so this is the one that we that we looked at. So this is the token that basically is the handshake between um, between Slack and your bot. You give it a name. Um, an icon, and essentially that's all you have to do because um, you know your bot is basically going to start listening um, to the conversation identified by uh, this uh, token here. All right, so um, before we get into uh, the Q and A, that was really kind of the the. Um, goal of the presentation is was to kind of uh, expose you to the different um, integration scenarios, and I want to quickly summarize um, that um, you basically have at a high level three uh, types of integrations. The first one, incoming webhooks, lets you uh, post information from Salesforce to Slack. And Process Builder is a great tool to actually automate that process. Slash commands let you uh, access Salesforce information without leaving the Slack UI, but using a set of predefined uh, commands that you can, of course, create and configure. 
and uh, bot users let you do the same thing, so access Salesforce information without leaving, leaving Slack, but using natural language, and of course, in that case, in your bot, you need to somehow make sense uh, of what the user said. Um, both Slack and Salesforce published some, um, some blog posts about that. I have um, a repository, for instance, um, uh, showing uh, a sample implementation of, um, of um, uh, slash command. So this, uh, I call it Slack for us. Um, you, it, it has a, a Heroku button, so you don't, even, you don't even have to kind of download it on your system. You can deploy your own instance. And I have um, an example of a, of a bot uh, as well. So with that, I will uh, stop um, sharing my screen here, and we are going to go uh, right into questions. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so I'll take the I'll take the first one there. Uh, so the question is, can you talk a bit about providing chat for external users from non-licensed Salesforce communities to internal? Um, Salesforce license support rep. So I think that was essentially the first authentication scenario that um, that I covered, which is, you know, in that Heroku app, you can uh, connect to Salesforce using, you know, OAuth um, and then access Salesforce using REST. And the way you authenticate with uh, Salesforce from there would be um, would be an integration user. So uh, always the same user. The other option is, of course, to create your own mapping and and um, and make sure. But but the key point here is that to be able to make a request to uh, Salesforce, you need um, you know you need an authenticated user. So I think the answer to that in this case would be to use uh, an integration user. So the next question here is. How is the notification part given as an example for notifications better than Outlook calendar? Um, so, I mean, or maybe you want to take that one. Yeah, of course. Um, so the way it works is that it provides you with more transparency and more auditability on the notification itself. What we see is that when people are no using notification, they can actually interact in line. So the notification comes in channel, and then the team actually talks about that notification. For example, if there's like a sales uh, that is changed from uh, to close, you can actually talk about that uh, and see what what are the next steps in line. So a notification, it could just start a conversation and you can have a collaborative process over that notification. So that's that's the benefits of having a notification over having like emails or a single, um, a single screen where you can see everything. Um, Chatter. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Amir, um, do you want to take the next one as well? Yeah. So, uh, there's the question here, as I understand it, is that um, there's a fear of too many notifications uh, and losing things in the context of notification. So I think this comes back to the tips around uh, digesting. Um, digesting is a great way to reduce the amount of notifications and provide the user with a, a great way uh, to see the data all in one place. Um, we do that uh, with our, uh, we have a stats uh, bot that sends us statistics. Um, and crash reports, uh, and it provides you with a daily or a weekly set of digests um, instead of sending us notifications all the time. So it, there's, there are ways of reducing uh, notifications. Another way is creating dedicated channels for different notifications. So you can go into the channel when you're interested in the, in the notifications, and you can pull out and leave the channel or change the, the settings for when to be notified uh, when the, when there is notification. So there's many ways in the configuration to reduce uh, the amount of noise depending on the importance of the notification. Great, thank you. So the next one, apparently someone tried to um, install the Slack for us um, example that I just mentioned. Um, if you did, uh, go back to it this morning, uh, as you can see in the repository, I um, you know, pushed a new version or pu pushed updates, but also I pushed um, 
uh, a more um, detailed README, so with additional instructions. Uh, typically, uh, if it's not working, um, I recommend you look at the Heroku logs because that's going to tell you if the authenticate your Salesforce authentication succeeded or failed. And then the last bit that can go wrong is to make sure that the tokens actually uh, match, and that should do it. So again, if you can uh, try again and feel free to uh, to ping me if it doesn't work, but uh, I think the additional instructions that I posted this morning uh, should totally help with that. Uh, next one, um, how do you take care of authentication? So um, yeah. I gave my version of it. Amir, do you want to elaborate at maybe a, a more general level? Yeah, um, I think the, the example you gave is spot on. The key is that we provide you with the user authenticated within Slack. So we provide you with a double key. One of them is the team ID, and the other one is the user ID. Uh, and, and these pair are unique, so you can actually map the user, uh, the Slack user, to your own user. Uh, the way to do that with a bot, for example, is the first time a person talks to a bot and the bot does not recognize the user ID, team ID pair, the bot says, hey, um, this is the first time we speak. Do, do you mind authenticating through the internal through our system? And provides you with a link to authenticate on, on your page. Um, that link should in include uh, the the Slack user ID, so that you can pair that uh, in the, in your database. So you have uh, the Slack uh, user ID connected to either your tokens or to your own user ID. And then you can easily connect. So the second time I talk to the bot, the bot we pass away uh, the user uh, ID, and you can easily connect and know that this user ID is mapped to your user ID. Very good. Um, next question. Can the Slack commands be made available to end users in a less codified way? Um, Amir? Yeah, I think the, um, the example you showed with bot was was a great example of that. Uh, a slash command is a think of it as it's like a, a command line. So technical audiences um, are, are love it. Uh, there's also an uh, an ability to have the slash command pop in in the autocomplete uh, and providing hints. So there are ways to making non-technical audience uh, use slash command in a better way. You can provide hints for what does a slash command do and what are the parameters it passes. But I guess the, the point here is that bots are an easier way for non-technical audience. Uh, think of bots as like the audience, uh, as the personal assistant, and making every person that uses this Slack integration a VP that gets a personal assistant. And that personal assistant, uh, as shown in, in the demo, um, you can actually converse with it in a natural language, and then uh, it's a much non-technical um, scenario than just having the slash command. Very good, thank you. Um, is the Apex code for the Slack action in Christoph's GitHub? It's not in my GitHub repository, but if you go on my blog, which is my last name .org, um, the code is right there. So I have um, three articles on Slack integration, one with uh, webhooks, one with uh, slash commands, and one with bots. Um, so everything is there, and we have links there to um, GitHub repositories uh, as well. The next question is, um, are there special licenses for integration users, or are they just standard user license? So I wouldn't be the right person to answer that. Um, I think at the high level, uh, though, and this is non-committal, um, you know, your integration user has to be a real integration user, and you know, you shouldn't use it to multiplex, you know, multi-user requests. But other than that. I think you should check that um, with someone um, who is familiar with uh, pricing and different licenses. Um, will the code and steps to do this be made available afterwards? So again, um, it's all in the blog post and in the GitHub repository. Um, yeah, so the next question is, can you recommend a few trailheads to get started with Apex? that would help building our own Slack uh, integration. 
Um, yeah, absolutely. So there are really two things that are specific to that integration in Apex. So the first one is the, the right Apex code that you can invoke uh, from a process builder, like I demonstrated before. So there are a few annotations uh, that you need to add to your um, to your Apex code and a few conventions that you need to uh, stick to to make that uh, possible. So um, for that, I think that if you look at the process builder uh, trail or module, it should give you at least pointers um, to see how to do that, or you can simply uh, look at the code. And then the second bit is, um, you know, you can write Apex obviously to provide the services, um, you know, to kind of provide the implementation of what the user is asking for. And so I would point you to, you know, for that, it's essentially traditional, you know, REST services that you would um, write on the platform. Um, so at that point, there is really nothing specific to Slack. It's just exposing some, um, you know, Salesforce data using, using REST services. Um, Okay, so let me see. Can a Slack app be, uh, be made for use within Salesforce instead of the other way around? Can a Slack app be made for use within Salesforce instead of the other way around? Um, so I'm not sure I totally understand the question, but if the question is, can Slack push information inside Salesforce as opposed to Salesforce pushing information into Slack and potentially even Slack pushing information uh, to chatter, um, the answer is absolutely. Remember uh, the example that I gave, which was um, to create a case, so from the Slack uh, UI. So, um, you know, you could have a bot that listens to, you know, Slack conversation, doesn't even respond anything to that Slack channel, but posts information to, to Salesforce. Why not? Uh, so, as I pointed out, it's, it's entirely bi-directional, so, um, you know, you can, you can read from Salesforce, but you can certainly uh, write to uh, Salesforce as well. All right, so we are getting towards the end of um, the time slot here. Um, I think that there are a couple of questions left, but a, a, a bunch of them have to do with uh, sample code. Um, so um, let's see. Um, I think the best thing we can do here is uh, uh, point you back to the uh, to the um, to the blog post. So again, um, my blog is c o e n r a e t s. So my last name dot org. From there, you'll have links to um, all the um, all the sample code that uh, we demonstrated today. If there are some unanswered question um, in the chat box here. Uh, we'll take care of them, and I'm sure we have a way to uh, uh, share that information back with you. If not, I will uh, write a quick uh, blog post uh, with answer uh, if we don't have a more formal way of doing it. And with that, we have reached um, the 2 o'clock here in Boston uh, timeline. Amir, it must be, what time is it where you 11. are? 11 o'clock, and you are in San Francisco, right? Exactly. All right. So um, I wanted to thank everybody for uh, attending today. Hopefully, you got inspired with some some fun uh, use cases. So I think the best way from here is to uh, give it a try. We're so really excited to see what you're actually going to implement. Exactly. So thanks again for attending, and have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.